Hi, everyone. Welcome to Conveyor Meetup. Today, we have Andrea Bagdalia, who will be presenting on roles and processes that make um, modernized application projects successful. Just want to mention that I will be sending out the recording in the slides after his presentation, probably within the next 24 hours. And if you want to keep getting these recordings and slides, like even after today's meetup for future meetups, make sure you sur subscribe to the email list at Khmer.io. There'll be a pop-up box that, uh, that you'll see, and you just put your email address in there, and that way you get invites and also just the recording and slides. And I do want to mention that next week we actually have the Litmus Chaos team who will be presenting on the Chaos Engineering um, tool to make sure that like your Kubernetes setup is resilient. If I already sent that email, there or the invite to the Khmer email list, but if you didn't get it, I'll put the link to the actual event page in the chat as well, and you can just mark as attended, and you'll get the broadcast link there. So, and as for questions and answers today, if you have questions as we're, as Andrea's presented, feel free to put them in the Q and A. Andrea loves to handle these like as as they come in and as he's presented. So. Don't feel the need to wait all the way into the end to ask them. And with that said, Andrea, it's all yours. Thanks, Jonathan. Hello, everyone. Let me share my screen so we can start. Okay. Option. Here we go. Can you see my screen, Jonathan? Yeah, you're good to go, Andrea. Okay, thanks a lot. So welcome everyone um, to this fourth webinar of my webinar series for the Conveyor community. Um, we are going to talk today about how to how to work on uh, how to um, design processes and teaming for for digital transformation projects. And um, specifically, I will spend a few seconds to talk about myself. I will give you a quick recap of the uh, previous webinars, because of course we went through a process um, um, when approaching approaching a customer use case for digital transformation, and then we will discuss about teaming. So um, I, I guess most of you know me already. My name is Andrea Battaglia, and I'm a member of the EMEA Technical Partner Development Team. Um, so I, I support partners and enable uh, Red Hat partners um, about, around solutions. So digital transformation and edge computing with special focus on uh, cloud native app development, uh, thus microservices, um, uh, and, and cloud native framework. I've been for three years the technical head of Red Hat Services for digital transformation. So I'm bringing to you my previous expertise and experience. Please feel free, as Jonathan said, to ask questions. Um, even during my presentation, I'm more than happy to address them um, uh, on demand. Um, and last but not least, I'm the um, head of the of a community project we are working on it we call it qiot projects so of corpus meets iot projects and um, we work on several use cases and implement several use cases um, around edge computing and microservices running on arm devices in iot um, uh, use cases as well so let's see, let's have a look at what we discussed already during the last webinar. As I said, this is the fourth of a webinar series, the fourth and the last. Um, and we had a look at the methodology framework for digital transformation uh, from Red Hat. And I uh, can still, <laughs> uh, I still have some, some clear um, memories of when together with my, the, the, my, the team I was belonging to, we started designing this framework, which evolved um, through uh, by, by the time, thanks to the expertise and the experience brought by colleagues and uh, partners. Um, this aims to be a generic framework. It's quite successful, mature and stable, and it splits into uh, discover, design, and then plan and deploy, which are mostly can, be, can both fall into a the same the same 
um, category or space, which is the deployment of the digital transformation project at scale. And the main topic of today, of today's sessions so of the teaming is part of uh, both planning and deploy. So during the discover, discussing the discovery phase, which is mainly pre-sale, um, we, we had a look of, at how to approach and address the customer. Uh, we we uh, had an I gave you an overview of um, what it means to uh, pick up the proper people um, and select the experts in your company uh, to be challenged by the stakeholders, the customer stakeholders, and to um, be able to identify and address customer needs. Um, when then, then we spent a couple of webinars around the tools and the methodology for the assessment and proof and pilot subphases of the design phase. Design phase is quite important. The phase must be handled by the best professionals you have in the team or available in the company because it's probably the most tricky part. You need to use the automated tools that we, 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 we discussed, for example, a uh, migration toolkit for application, a rather tool that helps with uh, the automated analysis. So you won't waste time analyzing the source code. The, the tool uh, automatically decompiles the code of the binaries deployed in production and, and gives you a res the result of the analysis in HTML format. And then we discussed how to go through the proof and the pilot. So picking up a proper use case, not too small, not too extended, in order to minimize the risk and avoid um, um, the, the worst scenario, actually, and be able to deliver um, the, the, the final product, the modernized use case uh, on time. And then the piloting. So uh, it's more a mental process rather than just technical, because technical speaking, of course, you can do everything. Um, mentally, it's, it's, it's a matter of having the vision of what you and your stakeholders believe is the best use case and the, for, for the, oh, sorry, the best design for the target architecture, right? So planning and deploying the process means try to apply the blueprint outcome from the design phase to the deployment of the project at scale. So you have to plan uh, the resources, uh, the budget, the time slot and the time frames. And then you need to understand and state roughly um, the, 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 the roles and the resources you will need no? during the digital transformation process. Of course, deploying means deploying, delivering the project at scale. So that should be an automated and um, very well designed uh, group of processes. So how, why, why I, I want to dedicate the whole webinar to teaming? Because teaming is the, um, I can tell you that in my previous experience, I've been, I had the chance to discuss, propose, and then sell, so meaning starting with the design phase uh, for the digital transformation projects of many, many, many customers. Um, the situation doesn't matter how big the customer is or that despite the size of the customer, the situation is always, um, the same, so you have customer stakeholders, you have yourself bringing your team of experts to the customer project, and most probably you will have um, most of third parties, um, so third party actors. Um, and in the case of having the chance to collaborate with your techn technological partners, you will be, of course, facilitated in the process, but it's, um, mm, rather a, the, the best case, which is no, rare, honestly. Um, <clears throat> don't forget as well the three big pillars and the three big monsters mm, uh, of the digital transformation projects, which are uh, the technical debt, the resistance to change, and the comfort zone. Mm. Um, teaming or creating teams or collaborating with people, it's not easy. People are used to their 
um, way of working. They're used to the technology they have used probably for five, 10, 15 years. Um, and this is something you have to address somehow. There are several tools you can do on-site workshops. You can, you can do pair programming, um, um, extreme programming, whatever. So, so there are several techniques. I'm not here uh, to, of course, to tell you um, or to explain what those techniques are about, because I, I definitely believe you are um, experts of that. Um, but let's start from the simple situation here. Um, basically, in a customer environment, each and every project, and by project I mean a group of application, is managed or most likely maintained by a specific team. Most of the time, <laughs> the times there are no teams maintaining uh, the applications because they are stable since years already. They are probably, yeah. let me give you an example, a small microservice rerouting traffic or just transforming the message payload, and which is living in, in a small virtual machine on a web, running on a web server. So probably that's not maintained since years, and the maintainers or the, 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 the developers for that project, they are gone uh, already. Um, so, so this is what you should um, try to address um, at the first glance. So keep in mind, each and every of these team should work on its own application, or you should try to um, fill the gaps, not the resources gap, when it's about um, modernizing or um, working on projects you are not even maintained anymore. So the migration team, each and every migration team, um, works on its own use case and project. Um, during the uh, previous phase, so the design phase, you created the basic knowledge base that should uh, represent, that should be the blueprint for the modernization project. Um, mainly, as we said, most of the applications, they fall into the same uh, category. So enterprise applications, usually based on Spring Framework and Tomcat, or whatever kind of applications are hammered enough to uh, disable the functions without delegation to the framework. So the framework takes over the application server, which is usually used as a web server. Um, so they've got the knowledge base. They are supposed to use the knowledge base to modernize their applications, so, so to work on their uh, um, uh, use case, more uh, sub-use cases or portion of business logic. And they are supposed then to integrate the knowledge base with with everything that came up during the uh, modernization uh, process and, of course, uh, to um, um, make sure that all the, all the findings and the solutions to the risks uh, um, that they, they had during the, the development are available to others that could actually face the same issues. Um, this, this could be fine, but in this case, um, the modernization is not really effective because in, in, in as, as you could as well figure out here, um, we still put people and the customer in the same silos-based methodology they were used to before. Um, digital transforming um, a, a customer landscape means as well giving them the chance to learn and appreciate and embrace the co collaboration framework, which is uh, completely disconnected from their usual, their daily work, let's say. And, and I can tell you, um, still discussing and talking about the, uh, the use case I've used during my webinar series, about the use case, I, I, uh, the biggest use case I've worked on uh, during my previous experience. Um, it happened, actually, to have uh, <clears throat> all these teams working. So just imagine a huge open space uh, with more than 500 people uh, working on inside. Of course, it was plenty of Scrum Masters. Of course, it was plenty of project managers. Each and every project was handled by a project manager and managed by um, a Scrum Master and probably heads, technically speaking, by 
a project lead, usually an architect or a very experienced, experienced developer. This is not enough. Um, I started receiving uh, the same support requests or the same questions every day. So I had five to ten people asking the same stuff. And usually when people are used, so are in their comfort zone and somehow they are forced to move to a different area, hopefully their new comfort zone, they it's hard for them to get um, how to proceed or to understand the full list of, list of actions they are supposed to take. So that was a nightmare. What helps uh, improving the situation and scaling much better, even in terms of resources, is the following model. So the factory delivery. Um, I gave you, uh, I, told, I told you about already lots of figures and, and roles in the digital transformation project. So we had architects, we had project managers, we had scrum masters and several stakeholders. So IT delivery development managers, and of course the project stakeholder. What we tried to achieve um, was to have a kind of steering team taking care of the risks, the main risks, and trying to remove the blockers. An example, I've been asked in this project to Kerberize each and every microservice running on OpenShift, which nowadays is a piece of cake uh, because OpenShift supports Kerberos authentication natively. Um, back in the days, almost five years ago, um, that was not um, uh, a native option in terms of a feature offered by the platform. That was something that was definitely possible to implement because, again, technically speaking, the, the, what matters is that you adhere to the standards and follow them. Okay. Um, so we stated, uh, yes, it's doable. Um, we just need to get a Kerberos ID for each and every microservice we deploy. So you take the application, you modernize the application, the deliverable is ready, you put it into a container image and you embed in the container image Kerberos ID, for example. That was uh, something that, uh, something involving a third party, the security team, not those security teams that stay in a small room, dark room, locked from the inside. So <laughs> it was not possible to reach out to them, actually. No, no, no. Let me make these jobs. I, I love IT administrators and, and security, but definitely. But still, that was the situation. Um, so instead of having the need every day or even twice a day to reach out to the project lead, so one of the customer stakeholders, uh, to escalate and go to them and knock uh, on the door and stuff, we decided to have a five minute daily uh, meeting. So the steering team was uh, made up of myself <clears throat> as a technical lead from the Red Hat side, the project stakeholder, the head of stakeholder, uh, sorry, the head of uh, scrum masters, the head of project managers, and um, the head of architects from the customer side. So whenever we had a blocking issue, actually, or we felt the need of um, delivering a half a day or one day on-site workshop because most of the developers of the people belonging to the migration teams was not, uh, was, was finding difficult to modernize that specific piece of software or, or business logic use case, we were just taking actions. So we were hearing from others. Uh, we were using the challenge backlog which, which was probably the, the best tool we could use. Um, and we were contributing to the knowledge base as well. So actually that was speeding up the modernization process quite a lot <clears throat> because the migration teams, they were still focusing on the business logic, something we couldn't touch uh, because the, the, the owner of the business logic is the developer or the project architect is definitely not a uh, consultant as I was from the technology vendor, right? 
even though we all have got previous ex experience, um, it's not worth to jump on the business logic of a project. Modernization should be um, completely agnostic, mm? but usual <clears throat> when you have to go deeper into the uh, framework, version of the frameworks and stuff, same stuff we discussed already during the previous um, webinars, um, it's worth to have the business logic owner or maintainer taking care of the fixes to the business logic and the steering team with high level experts or technology experts uh, to do the to apply the initial changes so thanks to the blueprint we knew we had to move from for example um, web logic or web sphere to eap or from eap uh, to Quarkus, plating monolithic application to microservices. So we were applying the, the initial changes so from the blueprint, and then the migration teams that were taking care of the remaining. Um, in this, um, with this methodology, we had the chance to um, apply met, apply tasks and work on initial steps of the migration for each and every application quickly, no? quicker than ever. So we knew the categorization because we worked on the categorization time phase and we could easily spot mm, the potential issues and the, um, the problems coming from the, <clears throat> from the code uh, modernization. So this is, this is um, a good factory model and this works actually very well even for small use cases small when let's say there are more than two or three teams uh, in the in the customer landscape and that's definitely good the roles and responsibilities are quite important so <clears throat> the steering team as i said must be uh, made up of resp people responsible for their own area uh, again, so uh, the technical lead from the customer side, the technical specialist from the technology vendor, and project managers or scrum masters. Be careful. Most of the time, some third parties will not show up. Uh, so if you consider, and give me just another example, uh, if you consider a modernization process that kicks out uh, a specific technology vendor. Let's say, for example, in that in that use case, as was kicking out two big vendors to replace their technology with Red Hat ones. Don't expect, of course, the um, technology experts, the technical specialists, let's say, from from the competitor or from another company already working on the digital transformation will team up with you. They should but it won't happen, right? Uh, well, in this case, I'm pessimistic. Uh, <laughs> so uh, um, this is my experience, actually. So be careful, they should participate as well as the security team should participate. So we actually had, and sorry for, for uh, because I, I forgot that, we had um, one of the stakeholders from the delivery team. So there was a team um, living on a different floor, uh, taking care of the delivery of the um, binaries, not the deliverables, deployment of the deliverables. Um, and trust me, they were happy to participate because suddenly they stopped receiving deliverables of binaries in a USB key and just deploying them into the servers. Uh, they were just firing up um, pipelines on Jenkins now back in the days. So that was um, quite good to have them understanding or uh, forecasting potential issues, which was fantastic, definitely. You can feel there and taste you know, the expertise and the experience of people. Um, so you, you must have this kind of people. If security team, for example, uh, just to, to, to stick to my use case, doesn't join for whatever reason, <laughs> it happens. Uh, you need to figure out a nice and gentle way to escalate. 
think of my use case. I was supposed to generate, to receive um, a deployable Kerberos ID for each and every application that was supposed to get modernized. And whose container image was supposed to be deployed on the OpenShift platform. So that was supposed to happen as soon as the request was coming in. I mean, it's not that complex to generate a Kerberos ID. So, you know, um, facilitating this was part of the duties of the project owner. And mini that minimizes the risks, definitely. Migration teams are made up of, again, application developers, aka business logic owner. It's possible as well to figure out <clears throat> how to involve people with a very extended expertise on several skills in the steering team. Uh, example, you're modernizing the customer landscape. You have switched from virtual machine, an hypervisor-based environment to a container platform, right? And then you, your customer is happy to implement DevOps, DevSecOps or whatever. So you are going to most probably uh, introduce a new role in the technical environment, uh, which is the DevOps expert. And if you think of this DevOps idea and templating and creating blueprints, the best way is to have, hopefully, yeah, then of course it depends on the resources, the best way is to have one DevOps engineer for each and every migration team and one lead of this kind of blueprint generation and, uh, and execution in the steering team. So you have, you delegate the uh, DevOps management to a specific stakeholder, internal stakeholder. Doesn't matter if that comes from the customer or from your peers or from a third party. It's still, so, you know, in, in, in Latin we say divide et impera, no? divide and conquer, which is definitely the best way to proceed. More text here, I'm not going to read anything, <laughs> of course. But the numbers are quite important. Uh, back in the days, um, for this big, huge digital transformation project, I was uh, there, not on my own, of course, but together with uh, other um, Red Hat architects. So people looking after the platform design and implementation, people looking after the um, process management, automated process management. Um, area and I was looking after the enterprise application. Uh, coordination is very important and if the business logic is quite extended and you identify and categorize the business logic in several big areas almost having the same size even though again enterprise applications they are 70 to 80 percent of the business logic but still the complexity of business process management and integration pattern can be quite high, depending on how much um, home-cooked code or how many handmade frameworks you can find or have been embedded into that part of the business logic. So be careful, try to split responsibilities and areas and bring with you uh, people from your company or techno your technology partners. Um, subject matter experts are quite important, so they should be there. They should continue working on the blueprints. They should continue improving the strategy and eventually update the items and the tasks to uh, execute to be executed. So it's definitely something you have to uh, care about. Customer must always be involved. Hmm? Um, and if you are from the customer, Technology vendors and part and technology partners, they should always be involved because that's the best way of brainstorming, making the decisions together. Um, actually, it happened to me to jump um, into a meeting. I've been asked to jump into the meeting five minutes before uh, the starting time, simply because 
uh, this person, he was one of the customer stakeholders, was about to discuss with the IT team, so the, you know, the, the, the big, nice uh, guys working on the servers. Uh, so he was about to discuss with them sizing of persistent volume claims or the person volume, the volumes you attach to the containers for the logging. So we had a very long and nice discussion about why a developer should need to get access to the logs. So <clears throat> most of the time, um, and usually in maintenance mode, uh, access to um, Grafana logs should be more than enough. But for example, for a Java developer, it's definitely easier to read the stack trace as it is rather than going and trying to rebuild all the lines together. And um, for that, we were supposing to have a few hundreds of megs of disk or a few tens of megs of disk for each and every container. It sounds obvious to me. It sounds weird to IT administrators. It sounds funny to the project stakeholder because they don't really care, but it happens to have this kind of issue. So it's, it's, this is a funny story that you know, sounds like it doesn't really uh, fall into this discussion, but it does because teaming, scaling, the steering team, uh, this is the purpose of the steering team, taking care of the blueprint and the blueprint should include this option for the developer. The blueprint should include not just development issue when you modernize the source code, when you upgrade the version of the underlying framework um, in respect uh, of your business, uh, business logic implementation. It's definitely something that covers each and every need. Hmm? And together with that, uh, it's important, not together with the logging, it's important to structure permissions in a way that each and every team has got access to its own namespace for development, to the, the storage when it's about reading those specific logs. So this is why technical leads, subject matter experts, and the project manager are important exactly in the same way. Um, in addition to that, I would definitely include the project stakeholder. And the reason why we had a weekly meeting um, five minutes long was just because the stakeholder had many, many things to do, of course, but we wanted to have him there. Uh, this is kind of compulsory in large digital transformation projects, but it's definitely worth to have a stakeholder uh, even in small environments. Now, migration teams, again, <clears throat> they are made up of application developers, but you have, uh, you should definitely involve DevOps people. If there is a technical lead or an architect, even from the, um, an ex a, a, let's say, a different team, they should participate in the meeting, as well as someone on the steering team from time to time should join. Um, I mean, of course, you have the tools, of course, you have the backlog, of course, you have the knowledge knowledge base, but something I, for, for example, I was definitely doing, uh, it's not possible at the moment because we are in this uh, pandemic situation, but still reaching out to people, asking, contributing, listening to them, it's definitely key. Um, so having the project manager, uh, the technical leader, the architect for uh, the specific um, project, so talking about migration teams, is, is very, very important. If they are working on a specific use case or a specific application or a specific framework or technology, it's worth to involve the technology vendors as soon as possible. Um, last but not least, um, in some cases like mine, like this use case we are using to, to go through, through our discussion, 
Um, it happens to have, for example, the architects team or the R&D team. Uh, they are important. They are important because even though they are trying whatever kind of amazing uh, latest technology and early early adoption framework, it's worth them to understand the emerging technologies and the latest stable enterprise technologies you are applying to the customer um, landscape and environment. So it's it's worth to involve all of them. Of course, if you have listened to if, if you have watched. Uh, my previous webinars, um, at this point, you should have already a clear vision and understanding of each and every role and key persona in the customer environment. So you should be able already to um, reach out to them or you should know already how to involve them. And then involving people means minimizing the risks. So this is not something that nice people will do for you and Busy people will not. This is something they must do. Oh, <clears throat> at the very high level, so the big, 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 big picture, this is what you find. Um, so let's go through this big picture again in order to make this kind of wrap up of our discussion. So. Let's start from the men in black, uh, application suppliers and vendors. Not sure or don't expect 100%, even 50%, they will join your teaming structure for several reasons. The technology vendors who leave, they will not be happy to contribute to, to, to remove their own technology. Some others, like the security team, <clears throat> doesn't usually show up. And then you have to figure out a way to open and keep open a communication. Escalation, finding nice people, direct reports, top nine reports, whatever. You have to keep the channel open because you are going to need them. Because you are modernizing the environment. You are not just applying a few technical changes to one of the applications of it. Um, and then let's talk about the customer. Hmm? Customers can have different sizes. They can have um, different technologies. They will definitely, I promise you, definitely be affected by one of all of the big monsters. Technical debt, resistance to change, comfort zone. So you have to address those parts if you haven't started yet which is something I expect. <clears throat> so they have lots of requirements, needs. They work on different projects. Usually when you work for a structured customers, you have one project manager and one architect or technical lead and one scrum master per project. Otherwise, usually you have anyway people that have a clear understanding or a clear big picture of the single specific use case. Uh, Try to always work on the technical skills, run on site specific workshops on specific technical details if you need them. And tests. It doesn't really matter here, but we clearly stated during the webinar two if you have no test, sorry, the webinar three, if you have no test framework for the applications, you are going to modernize. Well, that's the time to stop and ask your stakeholder to implement at least a basic test framework, because that's the only way to state the modernization of this use case. So this group of applications has been completed and delivered successfully. Um, and usually there is a test team. If you can involve them, it's even better. Poor people, I always, everybody always forget about the test, not developers. Anyway, um, last but not least, you hmm, as um, system integrators and your technical partners, um, digital transformation projects are complex. Um, uh, usually they involve many, many actors, as you could they can see that in this big picture. And that's definitely the truth, huh? at, at least in my, in my experience. Bring your best people. Try to support the customer with uh, subject matter experts if uh, it's needed. 
and eventually program managers and project managers from your side, experienced ones, who have probably uh, together with you already delivered some successful, uh, even not successful, but still, you have worked uh, on digital transformation projects already. And <clears throat> don't forget that this uh, model is generic. Mm? Apply the model um, to each and every uh, project differently. Uh, try to stick to even the same uh, big picture, but still, um, experts, um, technology experts or process experts from one side and uh, business logic owners from the other side is the key. <clears throat> Don't forget to uh, keep communication channels open. Again, um, we, we um, underlined quite a lot the, the need of an open communication channel with the uh, technology vendors. Uh, but it's definitely important to have uh, synchronous and asynchronous communication. Um, so an internal backlog change management and issue management tool is the key. You have to structure the way uh, people interact with the system, with the modernization project and with you. Um, it's fine to have a um, mailing list, you know, and this kind of internal chats and go to people and speak to them. It's the easiest way from time to time to get rid of an issue or to solve or to minimize a specific risk. It's definitely the best way. Um, keep um, keep these ch communication channels open. A technical chat would be uh, definitely appreciated by uh, the customer, <clears throat> simply because when you have lots of discussions, lots of emails, it's better to have, th this is my opinion, and most of the people, mainly engineers, they, they prefer and go for mailing list. I definitely prefer some technical channels like Slack or Rocket Chat, for example, um, where to split discussions uh, by, by channel and by, by category and theme. So it's kind of um, worth, in my opinion. Last but not least, again, let me remind you again, steering teams and migration teams, they should be split, but they should work together on daily, on a daily basis. That's, that's very, very important. With this, um, um, we, we have this survey for you, if you are keen to give a feedback to, um, about this session. And um, I'm, I'm done with my presentation. Thanks a lot, everyone. Is there any question, by any chance? Thank you, Andrea. So, for, so right now, there is no question. And for everyone, I just want to do, I do want to put a little bit more emphasis on the survey. Everyone, thank you for attending. And, you know, just so, so we know what topics to hit on or like how we're doing. I did put the link to the survey in the chat. So please fill that out. That, that's a, really the only way we can get feedback from you. Andrea, right now, I don't see any questions. So, I think we're good to go. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. And anyone in the audience, if you do have questions that come up, um, we all have Andrea's contact information. Whenever you all have uh, his contact information, you want to send out the slides and the recording. And I just have people right now in the chat, Andrea, saying thank you. And there is a big picture on the conveyor.io website. So yeah. I guess they can find me. <laughs> yeah, so we have we have Andrea's contact information everywhere. <laughs> to be a blast for him. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for attending, and hope you enjoy your day. Bye. Bye.